Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to start a micro niche. So be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. This video or any other video on this channel helps you out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to define what a micro niche is and we're actually going to provide a few examples. I'm going to show you how to pick a niche, how to niche down so that it is truly micro, and how to get started with a platform and a domain name. Actually, if you click the first link in the description, you'll get your first domain name for free for the first year. Next, we're going to show you how to install WordPress, activate your WordPress theme, how to get a premium WordPress theme and why that's important, some very important changes that you need to make to your website to be successful, and then how to start writing. After that, we're going to talk about how to make money with your blog, how to share it on social media, and then start writing. Of course, you wanna make sure that you click the links in the description to get up and running fast. So let's go ahead and talk about this. What is a micro niche? Now a micro niche is essentially just a niche within a niche within a niche. You are niching down to a very uh, small subset of a total market. And to illustrate it, I just wanna point out to you uh, something called inflatable spas. Now inflatable spas are a part of like the lawn and garden. And then if we niche down a little bit more, you can see they're under the pools, hot tubs and supplies. And then within that niche, you have inflatable pools. And the reason why this is a micro niche is because it really is a subset. You are talking to a very small group of people, but those people are dedicated and there are tons of products to promote. There's a ton of ways to make money. And so that's really the definition of a micro niche. Now the easiest way to find a micro niche, and I'm over here on amazon.com, you don't have to use Amazon, but if you go down and you shop by department, we're gonna click on see all, whoops, see all, and we're going to click on, let's click on, let's click on home gardening tools. After home gardening tools, we are going to click on garden outdoor, and then within garden outdoor, you can see these are all micro niches. For example, I could create content on just on canopies, canopies and gazebos. I can talk about the who, what, when, where, why, how, and do product reviews on this small topic, but that's how you do it. And really, if you keep clicking on Amazon or, or really any website, you're going to be able to find micro niches. Now, the easiest way to find a micro niche is simply to copy best um, copy the name of a product. We're going to copy this and we're going to jump back over to Amazon and we're going to type in review. And when you hit review, you're going to find blogs that are in the similar space. And if we scroll down far enough, we might be able to find a couple. For example, let's see this top reviews probably isn't it. Uh, let's see if we keep going. What you can do is you just do a little bit of research. You're going to see that you find different inflatable pool websites. Uh, for example, we could just type in best inflatable pool or hot tub. Oops, plus best inflatable hot tub right there. And you're going to find these micro websites creating content about micro hot tubs. And when you click on it, you can do a little bit of research from there, figure out exactly what they're talking about. Inflatable hot tub headquarters.com is exactly what we're looking for. This is an example of a micro niche and a micro website because it's the domain name is all about the the niche or sub niche and they're only creating content about the inflatable hot tub. So if we look at this, all of the content on here is all about this hot tub and different hot tubs out there. So that is an example of, of a micro niche blog. So let's talk about how we can do this too. We're gonna hop on over, we've picked a niche, you're gonna niche down, and now you wanna pick a platform. Now a platform is simply a web hosting provider that is going to host your website. In order to have a blog or a website, you need a place to host it. You are going to host it when you click the first link in the description. It's gonna take you over to Bluehost and it's going to walk you through the steps of setting up your website. Now, the cool thing with web hosting is you are going to rent hard drive or server space so that people from around the world can access your website. You don't have to host your own website at your own house. You're gonna use a third party like Bluehost. And when you get started with Bluehost, they're gonna give you a domain name for free for the first year. Be sure to click that first link in the description to get up and running with that. And so now I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to go through the process of signing up with Bluehost and getting your domain name for free. When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click get started. What I recommend is to click the first one in the far left, the basic plan, if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click select, and then move on. Here, you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. 
what I recommend is try and find a domain name that's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're going to get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now, make sure again, you want to pick one that's related to your niche. Click next, and then you're going to see a green box that says that it's approved. The next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information. Make sure that you, when you scroll down here, make sure that you leave all of the settings on. Um, but again, enter in your contact information, the settings right here where it says domain privacy, leave all of this checked. If you don't leave it checked, you're going to get people reaching out to you, uh, spamming you, emailing you, trying to get you to sign up for web hosting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once I sign on and move to the next step. All right. So I have signed up and I'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially. Just create a simple username and password, make sure it meets the requirements there and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're going to have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do want to note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time. And you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're going to move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now, the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you and it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all. And I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is going to do a little bit of work in the background for you. And we're just going to actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on start a blog but for the next step just click skip because we know what we're doing and i'm actually going to tell you what to do so that we can get up and running click get started right here on the left hand side and then move on just click skip here and click skip here and then just pick the first one in the far left make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you they have both free and premium themes which i'll talk about in just a moment so right now it's actually creating your wordpress website in just a few moments, you're going to click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there. You'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right. So we click log in and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work. But now we have our website, as you can see. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to log in and delete a few plugins because right now it has the coming soon and so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's going to say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like. But for everyone else outside of your network, it's going to say coming soon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now, I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but um, plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um other plugins that are already activated and then we can go through and make the necessary changes which i'll cover in just a moment so we're going to deactivate them and then delete them now you want to make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website the more plugins you have the slower your website's going to respond and, and function and you're going to lose out on ranking so make sure you have a lean setup very few plugins and then move on as you can see right now i'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're going to talk about in just a moment, as well as getting writing. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them. And then we're actually going to start moving on to settings, which you see right here. All right. So now that you have WordPress installed, I recommend that you go out and get a premium WordPress theme. Now you have a basic free theme already installed on your account. And while that's good enough, it is limiting. The reason why I like premium WordPress themes is they offer additional features and functionality. When we go to a website like themeforce.net, you can find hundreds, if not thousands of different WordPress themes. What we're going to type in is we're just going to type in niche or we can type in blog and we can find different themes that are going to be related to our topic. So I just typed in niche and you can see you can find WordPress themes for as cheap as $10 or as expensive as $99. What I recommend that you do is spend some time taking a look at these different WordPress themes. Find one that's going to be uh, congruent with your niche and one that you don't mind looking at 
thousands of times uh, per day or per year. And so what you're going to do is find one that you're interested in. You're going to add this to the cart and then you're going to purchase it. When you purchase it, you are going to be able to download a zip drive to your computer. When you download that zip drive, you are going to unpack that zip drive and there's going to be another zip drive in there. When you unpack the first zip drive and you get to the second one, you are going to install that. That is your WordPress theme. You're going to install that right on your computer and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we're going to go to appearance. We're going to go to themes and we are going to click on add new and inside of add new we're going to click on upload theme and this is where you're going to drag and drop that theme you just unpacked so the zip within a zip you are going to drag and drop it here or you can click on choose file and install it once that happens you're going to click on activate and you're going to have a brand new theme and so now that we have that and I've showed you the settings that you need to change when you first get started the next thing that we need to do is we need to start writing and to start writing you're going to click on post when you click on post, you're going to click on add new. And the way to start writing, A, you're going to need to do a little bit of keyword research. And I like to use a, a tool called Ahrefs. And one way that you can do keyword research really easy is we found a niche website. Uh, for example, Inflatable Hot Tub Headquarters. We can copy this, go back over to our Ahrefs keyword tool, and we are going to reverse engineer what they're doing to figure out the keywords that they're raking for. So I'm just going to click on Site Explorer. Now you can do this with any website. We're going to click on Search, and this is going to tell us which which keywords that are ranking. And what I recommend that you do, you can see he has over 4,000 keywords that he's ranking for. We're going to click on this, and again, you can do this for any niche, and we are going to sort the keyword difficulty by five or less. A keyword difficulty of five or less is going to enable us to create content and make it really competitive so that we can start ranking ourselves. As you can see, keyword difficulty is five or less. You can start writing on any of these and just reverse engineer the process. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to simply take this keyword, for example, we're going to copy this. We are going to go back over to our our blog post here and we are going to paste this in. Now the reason why we're doing it this way is we are optimizing our blog to get discovered on Google, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo. People that are interested in hot tubs or pools, they're going to type in Intex Hot Tubs Reviews and this gives us the this gives us the best ability for our website to to show up towards the top of the search results. So we want to make sure that we capitalize these and then you want to make sure that you are answering the question. Now I always get a couple questions when I'm creating, when I'm telling people, showing people how to create a blog, the number one question that I get is how long should the website or blog post be? And how do I really get started writing? And to answer the question about the length of your blog post, it really all depends on the topic. It depends on what your customers have written, how long they've written, and you should really write as long as it takes to answer the question fully. You want to make sure that you are within a little bit above or a little bit below of what your competitor is doing, but make sure that you are answering the question completely. And this is how I try and answer the questions completely. I go, who, what, when, where, why, how? So I just do a little brainstorming session where I will write down who, what, when, where, why, how, and I'm going to go through and answer these questions with regards to our keyword or keyword phrase. So I'm going to maybe do how does the in text hot tub work? I may ask myself or I may write down um, what is an in text hot tub, what to look for in a high quality hot tub. And I'm going to use the, the questions that I've asked as headings or subheadings for my content. So for example, I have how does the in text hot tub work? And what I would do here is I'm going to take this, I'm gonna make this into an H2 and then I'm basically going to answer the question below. And the way that you do your headings or subheadings, it really depends on you. Some people like to capitalize the entire uh, H2. Some people will just capitalize the first letter. That is really up to you. But the length of your blog post really all depends um, on, on the question that's being asked. Are you answering the question completely? Once you write your blog post, you're gonna click publish and it's going to be available for the world to see. And then the next step, if we jump back over to our slide deck here, is we've started writing. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna talk about different ways to make money. Now there are a variety of ways to make money with your niche blog. One is obviously going to be affiliate marketing. With affiliate marketing, and if we go back over to here, this person is an affiliate for products over on Amazon. If we click these buttons here, it's gonna take us over to Amazon 
if we purchase the product that he's recommending, he gets paid a commission. Now, I do have a complete course on affiliate marketing. If you click the third link in the description, that'll cover affiliate marketing step by step, and it is a free course. But that's just one way. Another way that you can make money is having paid ads. Now, he doesn't have paid ads on his site, but you can get started with paid ads with a website like Google AdSense. And Google AdSense is going to pay you pennies on the dollar to place ads on your website. Now, Google Ads is fine. It's going to give you a couple pennies here and there. But once you start getting significant traffic, like 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 page views per month, you're going to want to look at Ezoic, Media.net, AdThrive, and some of those other ad agencies out there because they're going to pay you a little bit more. Your, your content's going to be more valuable, so they're going to be willing to pay you a little bit more. You can also... You can also sell your own digital or physical products. Maybe you have a step-by-step -step guide to get the most out of the inflatable hot tub. You can sell that right on your website as well. That is outside the scope of this video, but that's another opportunity that you have as well. So after that, let's jump back over to our slide deck. So we talked about making money. You want to make sure that you are sharing it on social media. The reason why you want to share your account on social media or your blog on social media, your individual blog post, is simply because in the very beginning, Google, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Bing, they don't know your website's out there and they really aren't prepared to compare it to anything else out there. So what you want to do is find relevant social media sites. You can do Reddit and subreddits. You can start your own Facebook group, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, even create a YouTube channel. You are going to promote your content, your blog posts on these different social media networks. Now you want to make sure that you, you are promoting it on relevant social media networks. You don't want to promote let's say we're, we're doing this inflatable hot tub. You don't want to go out and talk about inflatable hot tubs to people that are interested in basket weaving. You're not going to build a, an audience and you're not going to get traffic that way. So you want to find people that are interested in inflatable hot tubs and promote it there. And then next you want to just keep writing. Now I recommend that you write 50 blog posts. So write every day or every other day until you get 50 blog posts. Now, the reason why I believe 50 is because it gives Google enough time to rank and, and quantify your, your content and, and compare it against other people. If you stop at 10, that's way too soon, you can get a pretty good idea of the quality of writing when you get to 50 um, and you'll, something will start to rank. If nothing ranks after 50, you are, you are way off track. Maybe your keyword research is wrong. Maybe your quality of writing is wrong. It could be a number of things, but after 50 blog posts, you're going to get a pretty good idea. So um, make sure that you like subscribing the bell if this video helped you out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.